What are the various tools that you're using? Well, these, these tools are um, tools I've made myself. They're made out of uh, wood. It's, in Chinese it's called wong yung I don't know what it's called in English. But what's unique about this wood is it doesn't have any eyes. Like, you know, with wood grain you've got like the, the lines and then you've got little pits. And that causes a lot of problems when you actually drag to a lot of clay. It actually sticks to the clay, it doesn't create any smooth surfaces. So I use that kind of wood to stylize my own tools. So a lot of these tools have four different functions, like say for instance this one here, I've made. It's got a hook on the end, that's for working with the space between the eyes. Yeah. And then this tip here is um, used to create the, um, angle, the, the eyelids, the actual edge, that cast the shadow to create that dark line. And then this one here, this tip here is a little sort of a foot. It's actually got a flat tip with a little curved end. That is for doing the, the space of the eyebrow. Yeah. Like that. And also for the space in between the eyes, the eye, between the lower eyelid and the eyeball. Yeah. So that's what this is for. Yeah. It's very effective. So I have to make all my tools, otherwise, you know, <clears throat> if you go out and buy your tools, they don't, they don't actually suit the needs for what you want to do. Yeah. Like this one here, this is this one I have to make to create the shape underneath the eyeball. This is like a sort of round curve. Look, and that's my place right here. Yeah. Space there. That, that makes a nice little curve the lower eyelid. And also for the nose. Especially what it's all about. And this one, this one here, it's a, sort of, it's a, it's a flat spatula type sort of tool. That's just, that's just basically shaping up some of the smooth surfaces on the face of the forehead, around the cheek. It helps to scrape off some of the excess of clay as well. That's what it's really But at this present moment, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make both of the eyes symmetrical exactly the same. Um, it takes it takes many hours. It's a long time. Um, I'd say the high, the eyes are the hardest hardest things to, to perfect because there's so many different angles, so many different uh, sh shapes, and each shape has a particular sort of reason for being there. Like the actual depth of the eyes, where it's going to dug in is to create a shadow that reflects the iris. Yeah. Here, it's a big dark shadow. And then we've got one here to bring out the pupil. And then you have this, this, this surface here. It's angled. When the light hits it, it shines and it casts a shadow on this surface underneath. The second surface. Likewise with the eyebrow. This eyebrow here sticks out. You've got a surface underneath here that's sort of gouged in. That, that, that creates a shadow. Most statues, instead of actually um, making these sort of surfaces like this relief to reflect a particular feature like the eyebrow, they paint it. They paint you know, the eyebrow on, it looks nasty. So rather than doing that, we have to create a lot of you know, relief, you know, various sort of, um, surfaces to reflect these features. You're working here on six statues at the moment. Yeah. What's the uh, significance of the six of them? Well, well the Banyan Bodhisattva is she's the goddess of compassion, and she appears in different forms, right? And she appears in what, what Buddhism describes as six different 
types of existences in this universe. And one of the existences is like the animal kingdom, the human kingdom, the kingdom of angels, um, realm of demons, and uh, divas. And all these different sort of existences, not just like in on this planet, but other galaxies. <laughs> no, no, you know, this is an infinite you know, universe, but there are six variations of sentient well, beings, life forms. And the Guan Yin appears in each different realm to try and liberate these beings from suffering. That's basically what these six statues represent. Where, six else, where else can we see these? You can't. This, this, what you'll see, what, what this, what's happening here has never ever been achieved before in the, in the history of Buddhism. That is a fact. No one knows why it hasn't been achieved. And we, we do know that it has been attempted, but has failed several times. So this is, this, is, this is a mystery. So this is why we're doing it here. And we're making these six statues of Guan Yin, and we're going to have them cast it and place it inside the Chi Lin Temple on Diamond Hill. And so far, we've done pretty well. I've managed to design these six statues after a lot of research, and I've created the three-dimensional miniature models that you see over there, the ones in yellow. And he's managed to enlarge them to their present size. And I'm now fine-tuning every different feature on these statues to make sure that everything is reflected properly. And uh, the casting will take place next week. And then finally, the bronze casting will, will probably take place sometime in the next few months, and hopefully succeed. That will definitely be an event in, uh, in the temple. Absolutely. I'd say so. Does it have any, uh, any further significance? I, I, don't know. I don't know. All I know is this hasn't been done before. I've been asking myself, why hasn't this been done before? And I, I, I didn't realize at first, but there's so much involved. <laughs> Not just in creating it, but all the things have to fit together. Everything has to be in harmony. There has to be a balance. And <clears throat> the number of features that exist in these six forms are just, when you first look at it, you don't realize it, it's like there's, there's nothing there, but there is actually, it almost seems like it's an infinite sort of um, essence that you don't realize until you're actually doing it. Yeah. And then the smaller, the, all the, the smaller you, the more sort of in depth you get, the more you deal with the subtle qualities of the statue, the more you realize. <laughs>